Good morning. Steve here. Beautiful day. I think fall has come early, even though the trees aren't changing color. The weather has gotten cool. It's breezy, sunny. Feels like the proverbial Indian summer. But, um, yeah. So today I want to continue, continue our conversation about Ripple Rock. You remember Ripple Rock was a major hazard to water transportation in the Pacific Northwest in 1958. The Canadian government blew it up with a huge explosion and uh, last week we talked about how the miners had to map out the rock from the inside. And all of this was in the context of a discussion about temptation and the struggles that we face, um, the things that drag us off course. So, um, in the last couple months I read an article in one of my medical journals, uh, a story about a doctor leading his bevy of medical students through the hospital. And um, he as he went through the, as she went through the emergency room, um, a janitor saw her and nodded, and she returned the nod. Uh, a couple of the patients in the waiting room uh, gave her the nod. She returned it. A nurse charting on the computer looked up and gave her a nod. And at the end of the day, as they were debriefing, one of the students asked her, so did you know all of those people that you greeted? And the professor, the, the doctor was taken back a little bit. And uh, then she realized what was going on, okay? In black culture today, it's a thing, uh, an important statement of support and respect that when you see another black person you give them the nod. If you don't give them your nod you're communicating disrespect or distancing. Now when I read that story I was a little bit taken aback because I didn't realize that this was something that was important in black American culture because I've been giving the nod all my life. Um, when I was a boy growing up in New Mexico, uh, when one of the Navajo Indians would come by riding his horse, uh, herding sheep, we almost never spoke to each other. Instead, he'd give me a nod, and I'd return it. Even as a nine-year-old boy, I understood what a man meant when he nodded at me. I've received the nod in Indonesia, in uh, India, in New Zealand, and it always means the same thing. Respect. I see you. I acknowledge you. Uh, just last week, um, I was over at the church trimming up some of the shrubbery around the church and uh, a couple of uh, pickups pulled up next door, spattered with mud all the way from their bull bars to the, the, tr the uh, roof racks. They had the winches on them. Somebody had been out enjoying themselves mudding, as we call it here in uh, southern Illinois. We don't have mountains, so we don't off-road. We mud. <clears throat> But uh, uh, two guys and, and a girl got out of the pickups, and, and they were already intensely into a conversation. So, you know, I, I kept my head down and kept kept at work. No need to be intrusive. But later on, one of the guys came out of the house and uh, backed one of the pickups, which had a trailer with a four-wheeler, backed it into the driveway, and did it flawlessly. Okay? And as he got out of the pickup, I, I looked up and met his eye and said, 
I'm impressed. And he kind of uh, gave me a shy grin and said, well, I've had a lot of practice. And that was our conversation. He went on into the house and, you know. Uh, but when I got in my car and left after finishing my work, the three of them were out on the porch and as my car door shut and the engine started he turned and looked at me and gave me the nod and I gave him the nod and as I drove off I thought yeah we connected what does this all have to do with temptation with ripple rock you see, in Hebrews, it says that Jesus experienced every temptation that we do. And I've always struggled with that. I mean, when I read about the temptations of Jesus, I have a hard time identifying, to be honest. Okay? I have never looked at a pile of rocks and thought, Boy, I think I'm God. I, I bet if I was God, I could turn these rocks into bread. Maybe that would that would prove it, right? I've never had that temptation. And the few times that I've been up in a skyscraper looking out, I never had the thought, Wow, I ought to jump down here, okay? That would be a great way to launch my ministry. No, are you kidding? If, if I look over the edge, I'm... I'm more likely to have nightmares of what it would be like falling uncontrollably through 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 space. Okay? Christ's temptations aren't my temptations. I've never stood on a mountaintop and in my mind's eye looked out and saw all the nations of, of the earth and all their glory and heard a voice say to me, you can have all this if you just bow down and worship me. When I read the temptations of Jesus, I can't identify with them. And I don't find my temptations. I don't find the darkness in my soul. I don't think, find the things that drag me off course. And I certainly don't find the modern flood of hedonism and, and, and violence that, that, that we're exposed to through the media, skepticism, all of these temptations that, that, that we are exposed to as modern Christians, I don't find them in Jesus' life. Which begs the question, if Jesus met me, would he give me the nod? Would he identify with me, with my life, with my struggles? I have a hard time identifying with his. If I met him on the street, would I recognize in him someone who I shared a common experience with? Well, I'm kind of on the horns of a dilemma here, aren't I? Do I identify with Jesus? Has Jesus truly shared my temptations? If he hasn't, can he help me with my temptations? And I'm going to do something cruel. I'm going to leave you on the horns of that dilemma. Okay? Uh, it's not that I don't, haven't found a way through this issue okay just we're out of time okay so next week next week um, I'll carry on here but I want you to think about it do you identify with Jesus temptations can he really help you with yours or are we left here to struggle through on our own and use the self-help methods that are available to us to try to make our way.
Be safe, friends. Keep being prudent. But above all, look up. I'll see you next week.